Hello, everyone. I am Ben Johnson, and this is the Perpetual Chess Podcast. Perpetual Chess is a weekly interview show where top chess players, authors, content creators, and accomplished amateurs discuss their careers and share stories and chess improvement tips. Perpetual Chess is a part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network, and we'd like to give a special thanks to our presenting chess education sponsor, Chessable.com. For more information about the show, you can go to perpetualchesspod.com. But without further ado, let's get to the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Perpetual Chess. We are joined by a NYC area chess blitz legend, a trainer, chessable author of the Yakatak Karakan for Black. He uh, collaborates with Elijah Logazar, who some of you may have heard as an accomplished adult improver here on this podcast a couple years back. He's the five times uh, World Open Blitz champion, and we are pleased to welcome to the show International Master Yakov Norwitz. Welcome, Yakov. Oh, th- th- thank, thank you very much, Ben. It's uh, it's an honor, real honor to 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 be on, and uh, I would appreciate. Sure, yeah, happy to have you. As we were just discussing, we're from the roughly the same generation, the same social circles, but we've never had a chance to chat. And I'm excited because my first memories of you, Yakov, are circa 2000. You just terrorizing people on the internet chess club. Okay, <laughs> you were, I love you were it. So love good, it, love so it. good at Blitz in those early days. So I wanted to start by talking about Blitz. Um, like, how does one become a Blitz specialist if you even consider yourself a Blitz specialist, as I sort of do when I think about it? I should mention, by the way, Yagov has a peak uh, chess.com Blitz rating of uh, 2993. Uh, yeah. Well, when you say, do I consider myself Blitz, how do you mean? Uh, like, do you consider speed chess your specialty, or do you just think you're an all-around chess player when you think of yourself? Uh, I, I play all around, but I, I know it's definitely my specialty, both in both in in level and in uh, in in desire. Like, I just love I, I love uh, Blitz, and I think I've always been in like my best uh, mojo for Blitz. Like, I just uh, yeah, thirty four nineteen was my my peak in ICC. It's funny even thinking like that's pretty high, and. and um, I just I just love the fight in Blitz. You just chill there. You play. The game's over before you know it. There's nothing to fear. You, you just the game's over. So so you you're in the moment. There's no overthinking ever, and you play the same person again ostensibly sometimes many times. Um, so it just feels good. It feels like it's you really get in the battle, and I, I just love the battle for 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 its uh, for its own sake. So I, I think I brought my best. Uh, mentality to 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 blitz always and yakov you mentioned in one of your chessable videos that you played hikaru nakamura over ten thousand times 12, uh, uh, 12, 000, 12, 12, 12, well that's yeah. over ten thousand <laughs> <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> it is <laughs> <laughs> so let's hear about it i mean that must be nuts i well i knew hikaru before before he knew how to play chess like so so his brother all the brother asuka uh, so, uh, what's, um, uh, Sunil, Sunil used to, used to bring him down to the Westfield chess club. Um, I don't know. I was, okay, so I was born in 82. Maybe I was like 15. I was maybe close to master. Give or t- and, uh, maybe 16. I just made master. And Asuka was like 11 or 12. He was, I think he was master or oh, he's like a, an expert. I used to play him sometimes. He was there and, and Hikaru was out of the monkey bars and he didn't even know how to play <laughs> chess. He was like six years old. He didn't know how to play. So I knew he cowered even before he knew how to play. Uh, but uh, but yeah, we played we played once in a tournament, actually. Once. Once when he was eight. Let's hear the story. How'd it go? How delicious. Yeah. How delicious. Yes. It, it, <laughs> it was a good one. It was he was he was eight years old and I it was my Karakon. Uh, and it was a nice it ended in a it was a miniature. Uh, I remember which table it was, exactly which table. Was that uh, in Westfield as well? It was that was in the Marshall Chess Club. That was okay. in a 30 minute game in the Marshall Chess Club. And uh, it was a miniature that I, 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 what was it? I sacked my queen. I was about to sack my queen to get a Bowden's mate, a crisscross, uh, a crisscross bishop mate. And he resigned and moved be- before. Do you have the game? Oh, I don't. I, I, oh, I, oh, man, that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be awesome. Um, I can maybe try to create it. I don't, I don't Yeah, know. maybe uh, offline. But tell us more okay. about the Blitz, because, I mean, it sounds like you had sort of a unique perspective getting to see Hikaru rise up through the ranks. I also, by the way, played as um, 
his older brother, Asuka, who was a prodigy in his own right. Yes. He uh, was younger than me and beat me a couple times um, in my teens. And then I only got to play Hikaru once in a tournament game. Uh, obviously, I lost. Um, he was already, you know, you got to catch these kids when they're like six. Very, uh, six. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he, he was already an adult when I played him. So uh, no, no shot for me. But anyway, I mean, could you talk a little about his development and was there a moment where you realized like this kid is special i mean obviously you're pretty special yourself but hikaru being uh world class was there a moment where that struck you um uh yeah he, he uh we, we 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 played a lot and um uh i don't mean to brag but i think in blitz i am world class but he's like world he is the world I, I, yeah I, <laughs> yeah yeah um uh uh, so he he yeah he's like he's just the best. I, I mean in Bullet I think he was the best ever at a certain, like, by by far. I mean that's I mean it's, in Bullet he used to terrorize people like like ter like people don't realize but in Bullet a few years back he was above Carlson by far like it was there was there was not even close. But I, I played him maybe the year two thousand maybe maybe before that I probably played him in the late nineties and um, and I think I. But I, he just became really good really quick. I don't know. Like I almost don't remember a time when in Blitz I, I was I was ahead of him. That's the truth. <laughs> I, that's the weird part. Even when he, yeah, he was just he was just a special. He was he was special, and he was the one guy I was intimidated by. You know, I was I was not. I just loved the fight. I would play like top top like twenty seven feet days. Like and it was just like a fight. I would just love the, the stronger they were, the more I would I would just dig in and, and, and enjoy. But but he was just intimidating. I don't know. I, I, it just got to me. That's funny know. because five years younger than you. So we're talking like there must have been a period where you're like you know sixteen and he's eleven. But he was he was still he, intimidating. He, he, oh, maybe when he was eleven, he was. I, I don't know if I did I play him then. He was even then intimidating. I guess we're twelve. I remember I used to I watched when he made the. G, I think I was in the Manhattan Chess Club when he made some GM norms. I think the day I came to watch, he lost that. He, he was looking at me. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he remembered that game when I beat him when he was little. I, I feel like I got in his head a little. I didn't. I didn't try. But um, yeah, he when he was um, thirteen, fourteen. I remember even when he was an IM, he was incredible. Like just like really special. We played a lot of bullet. We used to play in the, in the ICC in the one minute pool, uh, and yeah. So you, know, you mentioned that. Let's hear about this bullet thing because. I mean, you're kind of in a unique perspective to judge the relative skill of these uh, world-class bullet players. You say that he was definitely better than Magnus. Um, what informs that perspective, Jakob? Um, his rating was like, was he was like one of a kind. It was like Michael Jordan above everyone else. It, 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 Tiger Woods, maybe. I, you know, it, he, he was like, I remember in the bullet pool, everyone else was 2,800. Grishuk, again, like in this thing, I was, when I played a lot of bullet, it was, I was definitely in the top, like, like, that's why I said world class, but uh, Bliss also. But but he was like one of a kind. Like he's not even his own category, especially. But he was like three thousand thirty one hundred. He was thirty one hundred when everyone else was like twenty eight. Okay, and you you've played like Andrew Tang and. Um... Well, Andrew Tang is more recent. Yeah, that's interesting. They're, Andrew Tang. I ha I've played him back in the day. Penguin. Penguin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. he's really good too. But I would be fine against him. Again, maybe he got a little better. And when you get a little older, you get a little slower. You just do. Right. Yeah. You're, you're 40 now. And, uh, and what about, and this might be a uh, sort of, you may have missed the Ferruja generation, but did, have you played Ferruja? I played Ferruja many, many, many times, but like, right. When he was IM, we played every day, FM Ferruja, okay. like on chest every day. Like, we played, um, I, I don't play much these days. And then bullet, ah, eh, I don't know. I, I, bullet, I, I, you have to really want to want to win. You have to be like, or like angry every time you play. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that angry for better, for worse. That's a whole discussion in itself. Yeah. Like, I mean, as you get older, you know, your perspective, your priorities change. <laughs> exactly. And maybe that's healthy, but, but, but that's, yeah, yeah it is what it is. I did some yoga like a couple of years ago and I told the yoga teachers, like, this is bad for my chest. I'm just too relaxed. Like what's, and they said, no, no, they, they oh, yoga teaches you to balance and to bring out. And I'm like, no, I think you, you don't understand what chess is. You have to be like some deep, like, I don't know, angry, but you have to be really fiery all the time when you play. If you're too balanced, you may not have that all the time, you know. So. 
Yeah, when I spoke most recently with Grandmaster Jakob Agard, he was talking about the the Magnus right. quote where he says, like, you have to be a shark. And he was saying, like, that's sure. what he looks for when evaluating, like, the Abdusatarovs of the world and Gukash and people wow. like that. Like, like and uh, yeah, so it sounds like you used to be a shark. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, like, angry. I don't even know what I was saying. I think nowadays I kind of do know that's it's, it's complicated. But, but and it's not necessarily unhealthy. Maybe that's fine. It's just... It had, a, it had a huge place in my life in that. But I, I still love Blitz, but I feel like Bullet is just, just a desire to win. You have to want it so bad every game. And eh. <laughs> I also, when you teach, it, it's different. You're like in nurture mode. It's different. It's a di- different mode. I'm like, ah. <laughs> I, I get it for sure. Now, let's bring it back to the Bullet battles with Hikaru. Yeah. Obviously, you say you're a world-class Bullet player, but he was even a step above that. Um when you played him, was there a certain factor that differentiated him, or was he just better at everything? Oh wow, he he had no nerves, no nerves, it, n- nothing unf- unfazed. So, like he would just like vi- absolute vicious. He was he his calculation was was weird. Like I, I still I remember used to try to think of what's what's going on. Something it's not doesn't feel like human. And it reminds me of Naradisky. He's getting really dangerous too. Obviously, for Ruja. but like Naradisky, special talent like that. Anyway, um, but uh, yeah, he his his positional positionally, I felt like I was okay with him. Like positionally, understanding wise, when I could keep the game tame, and <laughs> I, I, I could squeeze him like my cheesecake opening. Cheesecake. Yes, yes. Yeah, we got to talk about the cheesecake later. <laughs> I have some, some miniatures against Hikaru. That also that I have the game. I have to find it, and I did not find it for Chessel, but I definitely find it somehow. It was a, I could recreate it, and it was a, it was a beautiful cheesecake. Traded queens early, and then and then sometimes not Hikaru just felt like it became ordinary again. There were times those moments in the game, um, but it was I had to be in the right state of mind, and it had to, queens had to come off for sure. Uh, a few things had to happen. <laughs> okay, and of course. Um... You mentioned you've seen him since he's a little kid. Uh, you're from New Jersey. He's from New York. Um, so I'm sure you've had many, many online battles, as you alluded to, 12,000 plus games and 10,000 plus. Um, but I'm curious, like, did you ever have any blitz or bullet like old school in person sessions with Hikaru where you just sit there for hours and battle or did that never happen? Yeah, it, no, that, not hours. I remember years, years back and I was... I was definitely weaker then. I definitely knew less about chess. I don't know. It was I forget how long ago, but it was in Washington Square Park. My buddy Noah Siegel. I don't know if you know Noah Siegel. Yeah, uh, I know. You do know. I, I remember him. Yeah, you remember him. Yeah, and and he there was like a game they had set up with uh, Hikaru for uh, oh with John Jarecki, uh for for like for like a lot of money for a game, but it was like five one or something. They were playing like like a lot of money, like ten thousand dollars. It was a lot, and, and a game. And, and I I I was like a pre a warmer up. I, I played Icaro for a hundred a game. I think Noah staked me. I think we actually lost. I like five one. So it was embarrassing. But 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 it, but uh, that's, the thing is, one minute is enough for Icaro. It's the same. It, it, it doesn't right. matter. It's not that different. Yeah. It's not that different. I feel like though these days, I I feel like I'm a favorite. I, I just feel that. I'm not sure if I'm right. Uh oh, shots fired. We got to arrange the. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think five one, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but we played a little in person then. It was about I think he beat me like a bunch in a bunch. He squeezed me in his D4. I don't know. I didn't know what I was doing in, in opening back then at all. Now I know a little bit. Um but uh but we played a, in person then. We played the world open, I think uh in the one of the world open blitzes that I won, he was there. It was a cut we tied for first, so that was actually I think my my thing I'm most proud of of the five, uh, it was a tie. So we played we played there. I think we drew. Um, so I was proud of that. Yeah, no, I would be too. Um, so Yakov, I want to hear a little more about your blitz upbringing. Specifically, you learned from the legend uh, Roman Jindrashvili. But first, Yakov, we need to take a break and hear from our sponsors. So we'll be right back. Perpetual Chess is brought to you in part by AimChess.com. AimChess has an algorithm that gathers your games from the major chess playing sites like Chess.com and Lee Chess, and then gives you actionable intel on how to improve your game. It evaluates different phases of the game, tells you how you're doing with certain openings, and they're constantly rolling out new features to make Aim Chess even better. Some of the new ones include a blunder preventer drill that you can do, and they've now got blindfold exercises where you can work on your chess 
chess visualization skills. So be sure to check out Aim Chess if you have not already. And if you decide to subscribe, then use the code PERPETUAL30 to save 30%. You can also click on the link in the show description to aimchess.com. You should know what that sound means. That's the sound of another sale on Shopify and the moment another business dream becomes a reality. Shopify is the commerce platform revolutionizing millions of businesses worldwide. So whether you're selling chess courses, chess boards, or something totally unrelated to chess, Shopify simplifies selling online and in person so you can focus on successfully growing your business. It covers every sales channel, whether it's in-person point of sale system or an all-in-one e-commerce platform platform. It even lets you sell across social media like TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, pack with industry leading tools ready to ignite your growth. It gives you complete control over your business. And thanks to 24 seven help and an extensive course library, Shopify is there to help you every step of the way. What's incredible to me about Shopify is how no matter how big you want to grow, Shopify is there to empower you with the confidence and control to revolutionize your business and take it to the next level. So now it's your turn to get serious about selling to Shopify. So sign up for a $1 a month trial period, shopify.com slash chess by using the code chess. You know that they came from perpetual chess. So that's shopify.com slash chess to take your business to the next level today. And we are back. So Yaakov, you had the opportunity to learn chess from an early age, um, from a legend, from Grandmaster Roman Gingersvili, who was also a world-class player and also like a legendary sort of chess, I don't know if hustler's the word, but blitz specialist, played a lot of games for money. So obviously I'm, I'm curious what you learned generally from a player of that stature, but I'm also curious about like if you feel like you learned under his blitz tutelage. Interesting. Um, I think he gave me an intuitive way of playing. He gave me, he just taught me to, um, hmm, a deep understanding. And I think uh, for Blitz, you just need that understanding. You just, you just, not too much calculating. He was a natural player. And I think he, he did give me that naturally. He would say things and he wouldn't explain them really well. He would let me figure that out. Like, double, fall. give me these openings, which are very shaky. And he would let me figure them out. Um, but it was an intuitive way of play. It wasn't like calculated, calculated. It was very intuitive, and that was uh, helped me. It helped me become a strong blitz player. And he gave me a great, deep understanding too. I mean, just how he he approached stuff was so deep, and uh, it rubbed off. And did you do like sparring matches with him? No, we. Well, that's the story. Of, so uh, we, we we played online a few times, and I think I flagged him once. It was it was ugly. I, I, I... <laughs> It wasn't that good, yeah. Not not you know, so. anyway. But uh, no, we didn't play. We didn't. We didn't. We didn't. Uh, no. Oh, we did. We did when I was little, actually. And he just crushed my stone wall a couple times. If he forced me to learn the cheesecake because he would play King's Indian against my stone wall, and no good. Okay, we've we mentioned it twice now, so it's I I know, but it's time to explain for our listeners what the cheesecake is, just for anyone uninitiated. Oh yeah, the cheesecake is uh, like a smooth like so. I have an opening for D D four that uh, I made a chessable course about, and um, uh, it's it's old, old, uh, old opening called the Stonewall Attack. I think it's a it's not it's not it's not known to be a, a very deep opening or very complex, and it doesn't really have the best reputation. But uh, I feel like we've given it uh, some some depth with uh, some deep ideas behind the surface and make it into a weapon. I feel like we've made it into a weapon. Uh, and then, but then if they do the, a certain defense, the King's Indian, uh, it doesn't work. I learned it the hard way many, many times. <laughs> uh, I feel like Greg used to punish me too. And then I got punished a lot of time. And, and then, and, but then I made something. One day I started forming lines to play and it was called the, and I named it the cheesecake because it's smooth like cheesecake. So <laughs> that's, uh, you'll enjoy it. It's very easy to learn. And it's, 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 it's I got some yeah. good results. So this is covered in Elijah Logazar and Yaakov's uh, course on the stone wall. Yeah. And it, the gr it's great to have a name like the cheesecake, you know, I'm sure uh, um, evocative and, uh, you know, helps, helps bring home the idea. Um, so anyway, you were, you were discussing, um, Working with Roman Gingishvili, um, and 
that helping cultivate the cheesecake. But I'm curious, Yaakov, what were the nature of your lessons with him? Like, was he in, were you analyzing games? Was he showing you Grandmaster games? Um, was he giving you in-game studies, all of the above? What did you guys do? I, I was, I was really, it's really an interesting story how we started. Like, I, I mean, I started in Elizabeth, New Jersey in my, in my school. Like, so before Roman, maybe if I was okay, I could mention. Uh, of like, course. Be, be, before Roman, uh, I went to the chess. My dad told me how to play chess when I was, I think I learned when I was six and I forgot. And then, I, and, and, and then, like two years later, my dad told me, like a friend, Leo Shorts, and then he told me how to uh, play, and I forgot. And then my dad told me one day. My dad used to play a bit. He had books, a lot of Irving Schoenberg books and Fred Reinfeld books. And uh, it's interesting. I uh, just play. He likes this stuff. He, he never played it in tournament ever, or any, but he loved the game. And he taught me. And then I went to in in, in my school, in the Jewish school, the Jewish educational center. Uh, there was a chess club, and Dr. Uh, Richard Lewis, who was my dentist at the time, uh, he gave the chess club, and it was free. And then he saw I had talent. I remember one day my dad told me, uh, uh, Dr. Lewis wants to t- offer to teach you for free. Are you interested? And I was like, of course. So he, he, he told me for a couple of years. And I, I got to maybe, I was probably like 1100 level. My first rating was 12 or 1300. I don't know. And he got me to maybe 1700, 1800 after about two years. I was like 11. Uh, and then he couldn't teach me anymore. So then he had Roman, who is his patient, give me, <laughs> yeah, give me free. He would give Roman free dental work in return that Roman would teach, teach me. That's so, amazing amazing it's like it's like a literal mir- miracle and uh yeah it's special if not for doc doc i'm not i would yeah i wouldn't be playing well, that's I interesting play. i actually i thought i mean i believe he does now but i thought Gingy lived in the massachusetts area he does he does he lived yeah now he does i think then he lived in new york he was uh okay. he had some chess and backgammon club in midtown back in the day uh, near brian brian park he's still yeah he's still, this is oh, this is back in '96, back in '95 okay. maybe. So I used to go out of school once or every other week. The rabbi said he liked chess too. He like the mid middle of the day, I would I would go to take some to learn some chess. We'd eat some bagels together in the dentist's <laughs> office, and uh, and then we'd have lessons. And what would he do? Um, he would go over my games. Definitely go over every game of mine that I played in tournaments. Um, he would. Uh, he would he would show me told me some openings. He would he would put out a lot of moves at a time, and, and, and he was like he would do. A, I feel like he would purposely do original stuff, like the sharp openings, the sharp positional stuff. And I I didn't understand at the time, but I would work to understand it over time. Okay, um, so it was mostly opening work you did with him. Mostly opening work. We did some. He would show me nice positions. I remember he showed me a whole lesson about a knight on f five. I remember how a knight, like a knight on F5, he would show me a lot of different positions, uh, how certain structures were were, 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 were uh, dangerous for one player. Um, and Yaakov, you obviously had a pretty fast chess trajectory. Um, aside from, from your lessons, were you reading books? Were you doing puzzles? I know you played a ton. Um, what would you say contributed to, to your fast rise? I would read. I would read. Devour books. I would just devour. I, I love. I just love. I would any book. I, I would read a book, and if the book is over, I would be sad because I need a new book. Like I'm like, oh, so I would just <laughs> just devour. And I don't think that's standard. It's a little unstandard. I, I didn't know that it was unstandard. I also never cared about rating at all. It's like also unstandard. I just just like I remember one day I'm like, oh, my rating shot up a hundred, couple hundred points, and now I'm top. 50 in age from my in the country for my age and i was like oh i remember the thing like oh that's nice and i, I was like i didn't really care I, I didn't, so i think that helps i i think that, that when you're just enjoying the game it's it's no no ego just enjoying as it goes a long way um i would play every weekend usually also so spending a lot of time on chess and uh self-motivated it sounds like yeah yeah and what what were your favorite books back in the day um, hmm. I like Capablanca's Best Chess Endings by Irving Chernoff. Classic, 60, yeah. Classic. Yeah, I read it like ten times, ten times, yeah. just like, like over and over. Uh, I could not. Nimzovich was too hard. It was for some reason I know it's a classic, but I somehow 
it's too intense for me. That wasn't my Thank style. you. I just recorded a big book conversation with the Chess Dojo guys. Shout out to them. And I I, <laughs> I was um I was discouraging them from they they basically recommend books for their students and I was telling them don't put don't put my system in there you're gonna lose you're gonna lose us. it's the too hard too- and I yeah. love and I love 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 it but this is like a book which is like uh you're an encyclopedia it's an encyclopedia it's like you it's it's almost like Nimsworth tried not to make it fun he wanted to like get a exactly point. <laughs> like, like hey this is my hey you, this is not for your enjoyment this is to for my theory, Praxis I like. Praxis I, I like because he's a try. He, he begins to make it interesting. I'll have to check that out. Shout out to David Proust. That was he recommended Praxis, and to be fair, I haven't read that one in its entirety because I revisited my system as an adult because I read it as a kid, and at the time there wasn't that much around, so I had reasonably fond memories of it. But when I reread it, I was like, oh, there's so much new stuff is so much better. But I'll I'll check out Chess Praxis. Um, but anyway, Capablanca's Chess I think is great book for I would say 1500 to 2000 level especially but really both below and above that as well Chernev's just a fantastic um uh annotator um any other recs before we um move well, to the I next topic I, I like uh jeremy silman jeremy silman is awesome he how yeah. you touch your chest is he's just he just he just explains things really really well i mean it, there's nowhere it's just great it, it's great and uh, i would also say like I know this is controversial, but I, I don't think computers really too helpful for, for people. I just I just don't think it, it, it hurts my game. I, I mean, it literally hurts my game when I look at a computer. I, I mean, this is just <laughs> how does I'll, it hurt your game? Because I stop thinking. I forget how to think. It's, it like switches yeah. the into and also makes everything absolute. And I, I don't think I, and that's bad. Maybe that's just my issue. It could be. But I but I think it makes it absolute good or bad. And I think in chess, you have to fight. It, 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 it does you bad position. You just assume you're better. It, it doesn't matter. You can't change it anyways. <laughs> you, <laughs> you can't change it. You fight it out. Um, I so I think um, I think that was some endgame book. Let's see what other get of uh, Irving Chernev, Fried Reinfeld, all his book. Oh, how to see three moves ahead and what was that? Seeing three moves ahead or logical just move by move. Of course, was was yeah, classic. of course a classic. Classic. Um, yeah. Excellent. Um, so. Were you doing tactics or was it primarily reading books? I did a lot of easy tactics. I never, yeah, I did a lot of, I guess that was logical chess. You know, I would go through it. I didn't do any like positions where I had to spend time on. I did, definitely didn't didn't do that. Um, probably most of my tactic work was blitz. Was playing blitz was probably helpful. A lot of end games. I love that. Actually, my coach, Doc Lewis, before uh, taught me, before I met Roman, I didn't know any openings. So, so Doc t- said, you got to start with the end games. So I would lose, and he taught me a few openings just to get by, but he didn't really, te- so it was good for me long-term because I built a foundation. I think Capablanca said you got to start with end games and then, and then openings. Now, the problem is I actually didn't know any so for openings. So for a while, I only had an opening for black. So if I'm white, I would play A3 just to be black. I would, I would play a waiting move. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. And this is in slow chess too, or just yeah, blitz? slow chess. When I was a kid, I didn't know what I, what I'm doing. I didn't know what yeah, I, slow chess too. And this did you like enjoy? Oh, sorry. Um, did you enjoy uh, slow? You mentioned that you you didn't care as much about rating, um, which I agree with you. That's great um, if, if one can cultivate that mindset. Um, but did you enjoy slow chess as much as you did blitz? Um, slow chess as much as. Uh, Back in the day, I loved it even more. Even oh, more. really? E- even more. Yeah, I-, I think tournaments were like a carnival. Going to tournaments, it was it was special. It was like wow. And I, it, 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 I did, I did. Um, I just thought it was it was interesting. Um, I was I back in the day better. I think I was always better in blitz. I just you know as I just felt more more natural. Played fast. Maybe I I saw things quick. I don't know. Yeah. And do you? With Blitz, would you say you primarily learned from playing or, I mean, was there like a differentiation between getting good at Blitz and your overall chess improvement or was it just kind of all muddled together? Uh, it went, it went to get, it, it went to get, oh, I didn't play, actually, this is I didn't play Blitz till I was maybe 13, until I joined IC, well, no, a little before IC, so maybe 12, but at 12, I was... Around twelve, I think I, that's actually when the one time I won the Parsifany, I was on board four. I was around two thousand board four Parsifany. Um, so I didn't play Blitz maybe till I was a little bit, a little before that. Let's say eighteen hundred. I didn't play any Blitz till I was eighteen hundred. Um, but when I played, I, I think I, I, I jumped up pretty quickly. Um, and Yakov, 
in terms of like your chess development, was there, did you ever consider yourself like, I know I asked you, were you a blitz specialist, but did you decide I'm going to play more blitz and play less tournaments or did, did you, your interest in tournaments continue uh, like into your twenties? Uh, definitely in my twenties, I, I liked it. Um, I, I, um, yeah, I like I, I I like I like both. I think I liked tournaments. Maybe the past ten years a little bit less. It's just again you get a, you play so much that ah, two hours at the board you start wondering what to yeah. think about. It's hard. Um, and also I'm playing like the, the top top players. It's just hard to be excited when you play when you're playing every day like top players. It's it's hard to get excited, um, but uh, no, I, I definitely in my twenties, and I still love slow chess as long as I'm inspired that day. And aside from Hikaru, who who, who were your toughest opponents in Blitz? I mean, or OTB for that matter. Right. So Hikaru, when you say Blitz, you mean Blitz bullet loosely, right? You mean yeah, yeah. You, okay, all the same. Uh, Narrow disc. No, I used to play like Rav a lot. So my 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 my, my best. Um, bullet per day, okay, it was back in ICC one minute pool. Now, does anyone ICC one minute pool was you click one, and then it, it hits you with someone someone close to your rating. So I would get it like in Smallville. That was his name. Oh, Smallville was yeah, a car. Car, Smallville, yeah. you'd be like fear. I still like a little little bit, but excitement too. Fear and excitement. Hmm. Okay, that's not now, now there's another one, uh, like Rob. I share like Rob. Maybe, well, I forgot his name. I forgot what his name was. The username. Hmm. Anyways, but was it Leon Robert, Beast? I know he was using Leon Beast, that. Thank you, thank you, Leon yeah. Beast. I think that was his name, but that's his name on Chess.com. Maybe it was also his name there. I don't remember if that was all. Um, and yeah, yeah, and and we played. I remember beating him six in a row. That was, that was what a beautiful wow. day. Six in a row, bullet. Yeah, yeah. Um, huh. So, and what about OTB? Do you have any like uh, like? And did you play any legends? Um, what, what, or do you have like a favorite win? Uh, well, I played. I, I mean, when there's not OTB. Uh, Carlson and I've beaten, in uh, in uh, uh, well, maybe in the academy we have uh, one of the games early video a uh, game where I beat Car. Uh, uh, sorry, Carlson in the cheesecake with oh, wow. color ideas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, the students will enjoy. It. But on the OTB, it's a, no, I, I haven't though. I haven't played that many. I played it well in some list tournaments in Iceland. I did. I did well. Legends on the board. No, I used to play Anand a lot. We for for a while there was a, there was a t- it was like maybe ten years more than ten years ago. It was I don't know. It was like maybe like two thousand. I don't I don't actually remember. I, I don't. But there was a period where about six months, someone set us up. Someone a friend who I knew and from South America. He knew uh, Anand, and we played on a small server. We played we played a lot, and he was we chatted a lot too. He's really not just chess and other just chatted, and he's really really nice and. And it, it was really, really special. Um, and uh, I would beat him sometimes. He said, one of my favorite things I ever heard, he said Yakov, that, that its sole attack is the Yakov attack. That, that, uh, is, the what he, attack? He called the Yakov the... attack. He, when I played against him. Was, oh, sorry. okay. The yeah. Stonewall is the Yakov. That's great. You say the Yakov attack. And he was like, he, yeah, he, he was smiling. Uh, that was fun. But I played him, but that was not on the board. I saw him in Israel like a year later. I was a bit shy to say hello, but anyway. <laughs> uh, but, but I feel... Uh, um, on the, no, not as much on the board. Not as much. I mean, I played a lot of very strong grandmasters. I remember Wojciewicz, we played a lot um, in, in, in the Blitz, uh, World Blitz. We played, uh, I don't know, I played everyone in, in the States mostly, but... Yeah. Okay, well, it's fun to hear these stories about playing all these legends um and to add to the folklore of uh anand being a nice guy <laughs> so really I mean, nice oh he's he, and he just fun down to earth we would joke about it. fun pleasant stuff every fun stuff that you would never imagine this or not oh and it, i had a, a few years ago in the in a millionaire open uh in in uh there was two in vegas and there was one in atlantic city that maurice ashley made the millionaire chess open i don't know if, if you yeah yeah but, so there was a blitz. I didn't play the one in Atlantic City, but I decided to come in for the blitz. So I was like in a, a groggy mood that day. I remember it was, I think, in Harris. I think I was in a groggy mood, but I'm there and I wanted to play, but I really uh, didn't really want to be around people and didn't really want to be play chess. So I decided, let me get, and I don't know if this is great for the air, but I, I decided to get a little bit drunk and I had <laughs> like six or seven shots of vodka 
and I won the whole event. I won the whole wow. 10, 0 10, 0 And so, yeah, this is not a recommended, obviously, but 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 it's it's funny how that works. Don't I mean, that. there's that famous story about Magnus, like getting tilted at the World Rapid and Blitz and hitting the mini bar and then going on a tear and winning a bunch of games. So, interesting, interesting. So it can be done. I mean, they say in pool that like, in billiards, like two drinks is the sweet spot. And then you <laughs> like you play better for your first couple drinks and then it goes downhill. And I think there may be some truth to that in chess, but um, but every once in a while things click. <laughs> Just click, and I might assume he like literally carried me to the board. And then it was a strong event too. And then last round, I played in Cuba, um, the number three player in Cuba, which uh, I forget his name now. Anyway, it was like twenty six fifty. Uh, anyway, but uh, but it was two and zero. He was very disturbed because he knew I was drunk too. He knew right, I was- yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that can be intimidating. Fun stories. All right. Well, we got to take one more break, Yakov. And when we come back, we have a listener question for you and some other things to discuss. We'll be right back. Perpetual Chess is brought to you in part by Chessable.com. Chessable is the leading chess education platform known for its proprietary move trainer technology, which uses space repetition to help you remember stuff. What kind of stuff? Well, tactical patterns, opening sequences. It can even help you drill specific end games. And of course, they have a huge library of courses to help you do that. They have courses both from prominent grandmasters like uh, Grandmaster Jordan von Forrest, Magnus Carlsen, Sam Shanklin, and they also have Great material for cl- for club players, from club players. They have stuff for purchase, stuff you can check out for free. So be sure to go to chessable.com and check out what they have that is new. And we are back. And Yaakov, your, you and Elijah's courses have quite good reviews, I must say, on Chessable. I was pretty impressed with them. And we have a question from a supporter of the podcast, Alex Marler. Thanks for helping to support Perpetual Chess via Patreon, Alex. And he asks if you have any plans for a new chessable course for black versus one D four that follows your color method, or if you're planning to make a strategic course using your color method, which of course means you should try to, you should first off explain uh, the Dacha color method. Okay, here we go. And it's without a board. So it's going to be a little tricky, but we're going to try, we're going to try our best without a board guys. You got to look at the board, look at the Academy for more because without a board is only without a board, but here, here, here it goes. Okay, so basically in chess, we have 64 squares, of course. We have 32 light squares, 32 dark squares. Um, we think of it as control as one board, one battle, and we're trying to control that board. We're trying to control the board, and the, some parts are more important than others. Maybe the center is more important. Fair enough. But I like to look at it, and I'll maybe mention afterwards how I came up to understand and, and, and discover these ideas, but... I like to approach it as two boards. There's actually two boards going on at the same time. There's a two boards, two struggles, a light board of 32 light squares, and a dark board, a dark struggle of 32 dark squares. And they're both important, of course. And we're trying to build in harmony, a balance of light and dark. And so example, let's let's bring it a little bit more down to earth. Um, we have a... A bishop only controls one color. Let's say a light bishop. It's great on light, useless on dark. Okay, so we give it currencies. Okay, a light bishop is a thousand dollars of light, zero dollars of dark. Yeah, and it's, and it's currency currency in uh, fluctuation. So right in the beginning, light and dark are equal importance. We we imagine, probably, but okay, light bishop a thousand dollars of light, and stop me if I'm going too too much, but. Uh, a dark bishop is a thousand dollars of dark, okay, but zero dollars, zero equity on light, okay. A knight, we don't even think of it as a necessary color piece. It could help control squares, but no, it is a color piece. It's light and dark, but it's not a specialist. It's not intense. It's not long range like a bishop, but it can get to either color at a moment's notice. So a knight is five hundred dollars of light and five hundred dollars of dark, okay. Just the rules of chess basically rewarded in, in, in a sense. Um, but here's here's where it, where, where, where it comes in, and, and here it gets interesting Where like in terms of strategy. Let's say you lose a light bishop. Okay. The books will say, oh, you, you may be weak on that color. Okay, well, how do you make up for that, for the, for the missing bishop? You're going to put the pawns. If you lose a light square bishop, you got to replenish the light, replenish harmony. So you put the pawns. People will say, ah, you close the position against his bishop. Yeah, that's... 
that's kind of that's not wrong. None of this stuff is wrong, but 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 it's really you want to build your own bishop. So if I lose a light square bishop, if we lose a light square bishop, we're going to want to rebuild with pawns. Let's say a pawn chain, but it's actually a miniature bishop because again, each pawn is controlling that square next to it, a diagonal. So you're building a handmade light bishop, and there's. That's the one. And also, if you lose a light bishop, like, oh, I lost light, I gain a knight, whatever. A knight is a knight. It is what it is. But you actually gain, if you do the math, just the math, it's actually a straight math. You, you invest a light bishop for a knight. I'm not going to go into any positions right now, but Grand Prix attack would be a, a good example, whoever knows. knows. But uh, let's say bishop b5 takes c6. Okay, but let's say you lose a light square bishop, take a knight. You're investing 1,000 light for 500-500 which means the net is that you're losing 500 light, but you're gaining 500 dark. You now have another knight. So if you attack any darks around the board, you could attack. You actually could attack it more times than they can. Like you have more dark equity. It, it's it, like you could actually clobber him on any dark. Pick a dark square and it's yours in a perfect world. Okay, obviously there's, there's, there's things that happen in the interim, but, but that's mathematically you're ahead on dark. So you're behind on light. We build that with pawns, and you're ahead on dark, and try to press it with pieces. Press your stronger color with pieces. First of all, know the math, and then press it, and rebuild with pawns a weaker color. Okay. Uh, it's an adventure. You trade people that oh, to, to oh bishop knight. I can't even hang hung up with this. Open minded, and you make your own narrative. Speaking of open minded, so I've seen you. You talk about this in your testable course. You write about it a bit uh, on your website on on a blog. But I, first of all, I got to ask the hard hitting questions, Yaakov. When you dreamed up the Dacha theory, were, were there any drugs involved? No, there was not actually. Believe, and not, no, believe, no, there was not. <laughs> 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 like sometimes, why? Because sometimes inspiration comes when you're with drugs. It, yeah, and it just, yeah, and it just seems very sort of um, very abstract. Very, very, it's very abstract, and I was, it was so, and also I was, well, no, no, it was abstract, but but actually, but 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 like you could. But you just show positions where it's actually concrete, like immediately concrete. What, you mean that? Does that make sense? Like the, the idea? Yeah, it does. Well, and that gets back to Alex's question. So, any any chance you would make a course about this, adjustable course, perhaps? Yeah. So, so there's two, the, the two two questions. Is the answer to D four? We're making a chessable course on Fajarowitz, which is has been challenging because it's it's very very Fajarowitz Budapest gambit. So it's a gambit. So people. That's do the one with ninety four. Ninety four. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it goes d4, knight up, just for the listeners, d4, sure, knight sure. up, six, d4. c4, e5 takes knight e4. Okay. Yes, exactly. It's, so it's more extreme than the normal Budapest gambit, which is already a, a gambit. So, and it's and it's not, people do not think of these things as colors. I'll be honest, in the past years back, I did not as well think of like tactical positions are tactics. It is, take it for what it is. It's not, it's not the dash. It's not a strategic but I, over time, I, I realized that everything is colors. It's just the rules of chess, and it's happening all the time. So we're 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 gonna yeah. In that course, it's 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 close to being out, and uh, it's gonna be very very color based. That's number one, and number two for for just general chess color education. We're, we're me and Elijah we're we're working on um yeah we we started it, it, it on a academy. I don't know my website, or whatever. I'll give the website, but but it's uh, about colors, like showing how all the world champions uh, think about colors. Now they're not thinking about colors. They, 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 I don't think uh, they, they don't need it. Okay, if they're if you're Carlson's level, uh, Capablanca's level, uh, oh, they, you don't need that. You just know everything. Fair. Enough. Yeah, you don't need that framing, but you're saying they illustrate the ideas that that exactly. But since we're not that, so we could learn from that in, in that framework, and we could actually, I think, gain see a game which otherwise is instructive already, but learn more i think i think it just helps the learning process the framing for our for, to, to learn okay interesting and speaking of elijah so again longtime listeners will have heard my interview with elijah he's a very hardworking chess student and a successful chessable creator and teacher um i did your um did your collaboration start from you coaching him did i pick that up from one of your videos i did i did i did we, we coached for, for a while and then i one day i decided you know what it'd be a nice just try, go on a limb. We'll try to do something new. And then, like he's doing courses. It'll be fun to make a course together. So I call him, and then we started, and and we did the Stonewall. Uh, we did the Carol Khan well, Stonewall slash Cheesecake for for white D four. Uh, for black, it was the Carol Khan, and now we're doing for Jar, which which is the most challenging of all because there are a lot of variations, and we're trying to make it 
intuitive and color based. So it's it's cool. It's actually I'm learning myself while doing it. Like it's, I'm surprised I would have guessed fewer variations because it's so offbeat. I mean, your opponents I feel like often wouldn't know what to do. That's true. It's like you know what it is in Carol Khan. We would say like, all right, you're you're fine. Just use the colors. Like you'll be okay. <laughs> here, oh, you have to yeah. You have here, to work. You, like here, actually, I feel responsibility not letting people totally astray. Because I right. feel like here one move and you're just dead every time. It, yeah. I mean, it, so high risk, it, high reward. Can you say that again? High risk, high reward. High risk, high reward. And it's it's cool because I think we're giving color perspective in, in the most extreme situations, and, and that reminds me of the the word dacha is, is actually not my own. Well, it's a rush. It's a Russian word. That it means a summer home. Mm-hmm. So that goal is that when you're building in harmony, you're trying to build a beautiful summer home on the chessboard. And that came from me and my friend Mark Esserman. Mark Esterman, um, uh, a long time. He's my oldest, che- one of my oldest chess friends, uh, my closest, uh, if not the closest. And and, uh, and uh, we grew up together playing on ICC when we were little, like 12 or 13. We met in New York like five or six years later. And we talked a lot about these color ideas and, and developed it uh, together. His, certainly the, 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 the word dacha, like he one time, it, it was in 2004 in Fort Lauderdale in the U.S. Open, he told me a, a Petrosian quote. Uh, is it because of the Dutch? I built my dacha. That's what Trojan said. <laughs> That's a it great quote. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and, and it was it was basically to to the idea, like li- literally speaking, really what he meant is he won so many games against the yeah. Dutch because he would punish them on like all the weak squares. He just loved it. He had built a home, but we kind of he he said like, well, it does it could also be and maybe we, together we we just we thought about it how you're actually building a home on the Dutch, uh, like a home on that. <laughs> And uh, that's when the Dasha word came in. And, 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 oh, when I, but in terms of drugs, no, there was no drugs involved. And, and it was in Israel, actually in Israel 2002, a little before that, I was playing in Pet, Petak. I lived there for a year and a half studying. I was becoming, uh, at one point, thinking about becoming a rabbi. Uh, so I was studying a lot there. Um, it was nice. I played more chess than rabbi study, so. <laughs> so here, you, so here you are, yeah. <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah, and uh, and and I was, yeah, I was in, it was in uh, Petaktik. I was playing some good plays, some twenty four hundred, and uh, I was playing the Stonewall, I think, and he had a bishop pair. He had two bishops, and I had two knights, and there was a square that was really important. It was a square that was really important. It was a C4 square, I remember. And I had a knight on C4. And, and he had a light square bishop. The, the C4, the light square. Of course, you know, but maybe the listeners. So C4, light square, okay. And the, his bishop was trying to crush me. Light bishop trying to crush me on that diagonal. And I had another knight protecting it. And his two bishops could do nothing to my knights. And I was firmly controlling light. And I'm like, hmm, it's nice. But I was wondering, like, why? It was just more like a existential thing during the game like like curious why because they say the bishops outrun the knights outplay the knights why am i out clearly making a mockery of the bishops and then i came to me like because both knights are light bishops okay started thinking about that and then i was it got me thinking about how bishop and then for a while i actually told my students that knights are better than bishops and i was just wrong so I told them years later, I was like, okay, sorry, guys, I'm wrong. <laughs> wrong. But the right track is wrong because knights are both colors, but bishops are intense on the color. And then I thought about the, the color money, 1,500, and many bishops came to my mind. And I, 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 it started forming. And I, I, it, was, it was something all new. And I was like, wait, is this even true? Like, it seems new. I'm like, curious, wait. And, like, and I, I decided to look at it. Uh, Casper of Carp of games to see if they're, they're, if I could see it in their games. And if I couldn't, I'd be like, I don't know. Like, I don't know to see it. And I was very pleasantly happy to see it. Carp of always trading a bishop for a knight and, and using the pressing the color of the knight and rebuilding. And, and, and I felt really happy to, to see all that. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, it, it's an interesting approach, but like you say, I mean, I think with examples, um, it, it would become a lot more clear yeah. and, and, uh, certainly, you know, color complexes obviously are a highly educational theme generally um, when you study these these greats like Karpov's games. Um, but Yakov, I got one other major topic I wanted to discuss. This has been a lot of fun. I really appreciate it. Um, you mentioned, of course, studying in Israel, and I know that, that you were raised with a um, 
an Orthodox Jewish background. So I'm curious, like how chess and religion intersected for you, both like growing up and uh, in adulthood. So like example, yeah, that, that, that's, it was always, uh, <laughs> I don't know if this is okay to, to say on the air. I could take it out if not, but, uh, but uh, that chess magazines were my playboy. Chess magazines. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really, great like, to it's, say, it's yeah. nothing more, nothing less exact. I would just like, it's, I would, I would never like people say studying chess. And I understand that. I, but I never even thought of it like that. Just enjoying it, like you study a Playboy, and like no, you, you was, okay, maybe. But but uh, so so that's uh, it was just a, a um, look. I, I love the studies and stuff, and I was very good at it. I love certain parts. Certain parts were probably a little much for me. Certain uh, the restrictions. Um, so that was what it was, and but but overall it was just beautiful. But chess was a good balance where I think chess you just did anything. Chess anything goes. It was like a really free. 100% freedom like you, you everything goes and you have to feel that you you have to not hold back I think that's hard to do uh, I feel it sometimes I'm just in that zone where you just know you don't care and you just play sometimes you're holding back maybe because of how it looks maybe pride I don't know this and that or or could just be you're afraid of like like a car like a little stifles <laughs> you but you have to like be free and that was a, that was a good balance where I I think it felt pretty free, but I think there were some things that, that was a bit extreme. I didn't fully feel myself, maybe. And chess was a good balance for that. I think it was a really nice uh, balance. Um, so there were certain activities you weren't allowed to do as a kid? Yeah, like I was at one point even very, very uh, restrict, like re- religious, which was, yeah, religious was probably fine for me, but it was very religious, like no, no girl, it was all boy school. All the, it right. was really extreme. And um, so chess for me was, uh, I would remember during lunch, I would go out to the library every day and play on ICC. And that was, uh, that was a good time. That was, it, it, it kind of balanced. It kept me in, in a good, a good state. Um, and then I understand you had some, there were some periods when you were playing competitively where you would play um, during Shabbat. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, that's an awesome question. Okay. Okay. Uh, Okay, <laughs> you did research. Oh my god, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, and I f- forgot that was in U- like U.S. Championship. Oh, in Iceland a couple of times when I got my IM norms. Example: IM norms. My buddy Michael, Michael Krugliak, who has been a best friend whole life, and he was. If not for him, I don't get IM. I, I, I don't make IM because he. I didn't think like that. I, I guess this is about. I made it in 2013, but I don't know. I was just enjoying chess. I, I, I would teach a little bit at the back then. Not. I would teach, but not too much. Actually, I had a decent chunk already. But I, I, I wouldn't care too much about tournaments. But he, he said, oh, let's go to Iceland. Let's go to Bahamas. I'm like, oh, yeah, so that sounds fun. And I played, but the games were on Shabbat. Can't write down the moves. Uh, so I would have uh, stickers. Actually, in the U.S. Championship particularly, they were strict. In Iceland, they allowed me to do without writing. But in in the uh, in, in, in U.S. Championship, they said, no, you, it's very strict. So... I have stickers, a book full of uh, chess positions where I put a sticker on as the move. Huh. And actually, Yasser, Yasser, did, Sarawan, he did a commentary there. He would nickname me Stickers. I was like, a, <laughs> so it was, it was, it was pleasant. A- any objections from your opponents? No, not the stickers. Uh, no, no, that, that's normal. Uh, for the clock, I, think, I forgot what we did for the clock, but no, not at all. Actually, in Iceland, there was, there was one of my opponents hit the clock for me. Oh, wow. And frankly, we we're in time pressure, and he was really, really nice. And I'll tell you this: you know, I I ended up swindling him, and I, I can't help but thinking that. <laughs> Jeez, no good deed goes unpunished, right? <laughs> well, exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Looking back, I, I I feel like I owe him a thank you. And I see him with I forget, yeah I, I I have to remember who it is, but it was a Ukrainian GM. I forget his name now. Anyway, uh, he was really nice, and right, no good deed goes because unpunished. Exactly. Um, but yeah, the Shabbat and we would, uh, prepare food, uh, kosher food and stuff. And, yeah. and did, did you have personal interactions with Yasser when he was calling you stickers? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, I didn't really talk about the stickers, but actually in the U S championship. So that was a highlight of my, of my chess where I was like, work really hard to get my rating up. And I would play Westfield every single Sunday. And I, 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 I did, I, I never, I didn't lose. I just like, all right. I would just, I just farm. They call it like farming. <laughs> I would just farm. <laughs> so these are like local quads for for local. less local listeners, and you're probably playing mostly lower rated players, right? Well, absolutely. I was around twenty five hundred. So one of my student, um, his name is Scott Swerdlin, I remember I taught his kid Ryan Swerdlin a year, decade over dec- decade ago, and he he said, "Yeah, you should be." Tw-. I was like twenty three hundred. He said, "You should be twenty five And he motivated. I just all right. I said, "All right, let's do it." And, and I just 
played a lot. I got up. Once I hit 2,500, I decided, you know what? I'm not that far from from qualifying. And I played the quads every 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 Sunday. And I uh, they were mostly 2,250s or so, 2,300s. And, yeah, it was good. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, Yasser. So I got the U.S. champ. That was really, really, really what an experience. And um, Yasser was – I came there. I was frightened. I told Yasser before, the day before when I had the ceremony before. I was like, Yasser, I, I'm afraid I will lose every game. And I don't want to go down in history – as losing, that's, I think, that's one for, anyway, I think that, like, someone, I remember hearing, like, one player lost every game, I don't want to be that, it's just not going to feel good, I, I was actually frightened, I, I'm not, I was, it's a, and he said, oh, don't worry, Yakov, you, I promise you, you will not lose <laughs> every game, and, and, and that made me feel happy, I felt like he gave me a guarantee, so, like, okay, I mean, he's Yakov, got the soothing you, voice, so you just he start does. talking, and you feel better, right? <laughs> exactly, Even, and what he said, and just the voice already, both, exactly, and and I did well. I did four. I did a form above my rating was so. Uh, but he was really. You know, it really made a difference. It really, really made a difference. I was very afraid. I made a difference. So. Any other memories from that U.S. championship? Yeah, the, it was nice. Uh, there was. Uh, oh, I remember Lyra Christensen crushing me, and 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 and, and Shanklin crushing me. Everyone jumped on me. The Carol the Caro Khan, one of my uh, lines of the Bronstein Larson. They all played again. They all punished me because the problem was that that I'm very easy to prepare, and it's still a problem. I'm really easy to prepare against. I, I kind of like an opening. I just don't, and I'm stubborn. Yeah, I'm you stubborn. say you've been playing them for like 25 years plus, right? Yeah, that's, that's what that's what I say. Uh, who yeah. said that? Uh, you said it in your chessable video, and, like I did. Uh, uh, chessable, ah, yes, yes, exactly. So it's just to say it's easy. Maybe isn't even an understatement. It's it's really easy. But I've I've tried to like revamp the lines, but for the course, I had to I had to like get it tight. So I, I worked on some of the issues. Um, but I I mean, like anything, if someone you know, I think I fixed up the stuff, but again, if at the time I, I didn't know some of that, and if someone knows what you're going to do, you're, 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 yeah, it's not uh, obviously ideal, especially at this. I level. mean, players at that level, that's no, like exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah, exactly. It totally, totally makes sense. Uh, um, well, Yakov, this has been great. Just a couple other things before we go. Number one, I know you're sort of rolling out a chess academy in addition to the chessable courses and the sort of targeted lessons that you're doing. Um, could could you um um Tell our listeners about your vision for that. Yeah, I think it's it's really really cool. I've gotten some good reviews. Um, and uh, oh, and if I could just mention something, I really wanted to say. Uh, 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 one of my students, I never mentioned, uh, Le- uh, uh, Levy Rosman used to be my student. The, uh, oh he, man, you buried the lead. Like, inspired <laughs> by the, the co- yeah, I forgot. I know it's the last. It's like it's like in therapy. The last thing you say is like the important. Is very important. All right, let's hear the little Levy stories. I've heard him from his perspective. He describes himself as like a young tyrant when he was a kid, obviously talented at chess. But what are your memories of Levy? Um, I didn't teach him for that long, but I uh, but I definitely I taught him the stonewall. I also taught him like the color ideas. So like, um, you know, flattering. He 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 mentions he, you know he he he's definitely inspired by the color ideas. If you look closely, you'll you'll, you'll see like he taught like the light and dark money. Like you, it, it sometimes. Um, and uh, no, he was talented. I mean, he was talented, motivated, and uh, and I didn't think he was listening that closely. But I, like, when I see a decade later, he, he's, he's he's you know inspired idea. So like, that's that's pretty cool. I'm definitely motivated. Oh, it's it's. And and let me ask you, as someone who knew him from a little kid, you probably heard when he was starting to make content. Has has his rise surprised you? His rise in in, in chess in, in content. I mean, in really oh, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, I, I listen. I mean, that he's like the god of god. I mean, I'm I'm just trying to learn. And and I tell my, my Mike, who helps me with the academy, and I'm like, listen, everything he does, I said, everything Levy does is is gold. We gotta we gotta learn a little at a time. I mean, you know, the chess he's a great player too. But and what he's doing, con- it's just it's just gold. Everything. It's so amazing, I, I can, man. It, you know, some yeah. I, I mean, it's 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 unbelievable. So I'm trying to. Like I, and someone told me this. Like, I, I, like Jacob, your videos are awesome, and they're and they're as good, if not even better than Levy's. I mean, obviously, it's 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 not a, it's subjective. Is it? But 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 I was I was that it was a big compliment to me. But uh, obviously, everything he does is 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 balanced and 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 and, and funny and a lot of things and everything. Uh, so I'm trying to incorporate. Yeah, yeah. So amazing. Um, that's but, funny. So, okay. Bringing it back to your academy, you can, you should have it on the webpage, you know, teacher, you taught at Levy everything he knows, but anyway, go on. I know. I know. It would be fun though. I'm, I'm going to reach out to him actually. It'd be, it'd be like kind of collab and like, and then talk about colors at one time together. It would be interesting. I, no, not everything he knows, by the way, but, but I, I know you, you, you <laughs> but yeah, it would be fun to tell. This, this, uh, yeah. Um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, so the academy, it, it's, a. Uh, 
we're working on is making videos and and really really educate. I felt like like I'm teaching mostly in uh, for, for years. I'm teaching one on one mostly. Some in schools as well, but I teach mostly one on one. Mostly adults. I love teaching adults. I mean, I, eh, kids is not for. <laughs> I, know, I like a more relaxed approach. Kids it gets more intense. <laughs> the parents hate me because I tell their kids, "Don't don't do homework. Like just do whatever you want to do." Like this is <laughs> so, so like the kids love me. Parents, the problem is the kids the one paying doesn't work. Logistics don't don't add up. So yeah, yeah. But um, but adults, I, I, I a lot of people have told me this is my favorite hour of the week. They just enjoy it and and learn a lot too. And I think the color ideas sound intimidating, but um, but very very quickly they become very easy to use and like. It, it's nice. Um, so I'm working on the, for people that generally and people lessons a lot of time for people and and money. So so it's just academy, which I think is great. Great education is a is a good fit for people, and it's basically making videos, one to two videos a week. We already have twenty, I think twenty eight videos, and it's going through every world champion and like some of the best players. From back from Morphe, seeing how Morphe used color ideas, which is kind of cool because it's not we don't think of it like that. And it's really is interesting to me as I do it. And we're having a situation where people could, could ask me questions during the week and send me games. And it's very uh, it's it's um, I think it's a great learning uh, tool. And they're playing well. The members play me a correspondence chess, and we talk about the game as it goes. Um, so it's a one on one experience. And Elijah's helping out too. He's making some group lessons. Uh, with the members. Excellent. Well, we we will link to that. And in closing, Yaakov, we got to ask you sort of the proverbial question. When, since you are working primarily with um, adult students, if someone says, "Hey, Yaakov, I have ten hours a week to do chess," like how how do you tell them to to spend that time? Yeah, uh, ten hours, including lessons, not lessons on their own. Like, like, like I know it's it's. It, it, yeah, let's say uh, um, including okay. lessons. Including including lessons. Okay, I think I think an hour or two a week is is ideal. You gotta join the academy. There you go. You gotta join the academy. <laughs> you gotta, no, no. So making it cheap, I'm probably too cheap. But like ten dollars is like the cheapest tier. That's fifty. Like it's per it's, month. It's, per month. Yeah. So it's yeah, just, that it, is inexpensive. Yeah, and, and I, I believe it's actually really like solid education. I, I really am personalized, so I think it's a uh, be good. Um, going well so far. But yeah, for for that, I think people should just read a lot of books. Like, just read books and, and don't think so much about what you're doing. I I, I mean, I I think after you read, when you read, don't think like, well, what did I learn from this? And try to like think, just read, just read a lot of Endgame books, and not like technical Endgames. Learn from like the, the Capablanca, see his games. I, that's why I like Irving Chernov, and uh, he's like a cheerleader. Yeah. He makes it fun, and, and, and you yeah. can get in that feeling. And it, at the very least, if you learn nothing, you'll have a good time. Well you'll have said. A good time. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I'm working on a, a book, sort of com compiled wisdom of uh, perpetual chess guests. And one of the nice. topics that I get into is like this sort of debate about like with end games, do you study the technical endings? You know, do you memorize certain positions or do you just sort of watch the masters in action? So given what you just said, I might have to quote you in it, Yaakov. Nice. Absolutely. Oh, beautiful. I'm going to be honored. Okay. Excellent. All right. Well, Yaakov, this has been a lot of fun. So many great stories uh, from, you. from your rise up the ranks. Um, anything to add before we say our goodbyes? Uh, uh, yeah, I guess does that make sense if I give, should I give the uh, uh, website link or maybe I should? Uh... I mean, you could say if it's like it rolls off the tongue, you could tell me, but mainly I generally like any anything for um, websites and chessable courses and social media. If you have any, like I'll put it in the show description, but um, but sure, man, it can't hurt to mention the website's name. Website, www.yakattack.com. But like the spelling oh, that's is easy enough. Easy enough, right? It's like my name, Yak. Well, there's two A's. So Y-A-A-C and attack. And that's my same name for Chessable. So yeah, that's why I'm, you know, it's. I think it's a fun name. I couldn't find a perfect, oh, Yak Attack is chill. That's pretty like, good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Like Yak, because the Yak is like a buffalo, you know, so it's whatever. It's a play on words. But, but yeah, Y-A-C, attack.com. And that's, uh. But is right now the, the 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 academy is using just Patreon, well, which is fine. But I think I'm trying to expand it to make it its own site. Anyway, but for now, the all the wyakattack.com has everything. Okay, uh, we'll excellent. Everything. Well, we will link to that, Yaakov. And after all these years, it was good to uh, to finally hear your stories firsthand. Thank you so much. Thank you. Listeners, one other detail that I am Yaakov Norowitz forgot to mention. If you do check out his academy, he will give free one-month previews. That's at yakattack.com, and I will link to it and everything else we discuss in the show description. Thanks for listening. Catch you all next week. Thanks to everyone who helps make Perpetual Chess possible. 
big shout out to my producer, Matthew Passy. I'd also like to thank the Blue Wire Podcast Network, with whom we are proud to be affiliated. Be sure to follow us on social media, Beneficial1 on Twitter, at Perpetual Chess on Instagram, and or you can join the Perpetual Chess Facebook group. You can email me, ben at perpetualchesspod.com. And of course, last but not least, I'd like to give major thanks to the Perpetual Chess Patreon and PayPal supporters, those who choose to join that community based on their level of support can do things like submit questions for guests of the show, have access to live Zoom Q&A lectures with grandmasters who often have appeared on the show, going over chess games, answering questions, stuff like that. And you can even get access to ad-free perpetual chess if that's your preference. So, but most of all, thanks to everyone for listening and we will catch you all on...